Hello everyone and welcome back to Flight Sim 2020. During a recent live stream, I decided to commemorate the 53rd anniversary of Apollo 11 by flying around the world in a Concorde. So during this video, which is a truncated version of the entire flight, you will be hearing the Apollo 11 audio, which we were listening to at the same time. I was using apollo11inrealtime.org so that we'd be in sync with the real events 53 years ago. But I decided to start taking off before the actual liftoff of Apollo 11. And uh, that was just a practical thing so that I would be focused on the right thing at the right time. And we are taking off from John F. Kennedy International Airport in New York City, heading to Panama. The goal of the flight was to fly around the world in 24 hours so that we would basically be sun synchronous. The sun would never move, but that's not exactly how it would work out because we'd sometimes not be flying directly westward, which you have to do in order to have the sun stay still. Uh, we'll be going further south or further north at certain points, so it doesn't really stay still. But in principle, you get the idea. And we are headed to Panama first because I also created the rule that we should try as much as possible to not be over land while we are past the sound barrier, you know, obeying that extra rule. And so we're going from New York to Panama, Panama to Los Angeles, Los Angeles to Honolulu, Honolulu to Tokyo, Tokyo ultimately to Kuala Lumpur, Kuala Lumpur to Abu Dhabi, Abu Dhabi to Portugal, Lisbon, and Lisbon back to New York. That is the planned flight. So here we are, having lifted off. Consistently, this DC Designs Concorde seems to take a longer time getting off the ground than I think it ought to, and that's gonna cause problems later on. Okay, well, here they are getting ready for the liftoff, so I'll just leave it to the Apollo 11 audio so we can enjoy it. And I do appreciate the rocket sound effect that Apollo in Realtime.org decided to add to the audio. Of course, that wasn't part of the original PAO loop or anything like that. So here we are, leaving New York City. We weren't really doing a sightseeing tour here, so it was just a matter of going point by point. And just to make this clear, I took off expecting that this would be a continuous 24-hour flight. Uh, so ultimately we have eight legs and I would do it continuously, but I would be taking breaks, of course, while it was on autopilot. So yeah, but still, it is a heck of a plan. Ultimately it did not go according to plan, and we'll see why. But here we are, uh, Mach 2.04 at 55,000 feet. That was basically where I aimed for for all of the flights as far as our cruise. And this is the message I displayed during the live stream when I was not actually present in the seat. Uh, <laughs> yes, please don't tell the FAA that I was flying with autopilot without actually being in the cockpit. But anyway, after carefully avoiding Florida, well, we might have clipped Miami just a little bit and carefully avoiding Cuba, so we took a very circuitous route around the Caribbean. We are here at Panama, and we are landing at Scarlett Martinez Airport, and it is MPSM. It has an 8,000 foot runway, which I thought would be enough for the Concorde. And 
here, touching down. I, I consistently misjudge exactly how high Concorde's landing gear is, that's just a thing. Um, somebody in the comments ultimately tells me that I can raise my eye point by pressing spacebar, which is really convenient, and I'll be using that in the subsequent flights. Uh, that is essential, actually, with Concorde. Um, it's not that easy to see the runway otherwise, but here we are with our Pan Am livery taking a parking spot. Not much detail in this particular airport, but that's alright. That first flight was 2 hours and 24 minutes, and then here we are heading to Los Angeles. You can see the plot trying to avoid the coast, uh, making sure that we do not go past the speed of sound over land, but uh, I treat that very liberally, and there is one part that we decided was unavoidable, and that was over Iraq and Syria, out of all places, we will be going past the speed of sound. I trust that will be perfectly safe. Anyway, so it was an 8,000 foot runway, and it ought to have been enough, but uh, as we are going to soon see here, as I lift off, I really take all of it, and I end up clipping the trees. So. Full disclosure, we actually crashed that time. There was another time that I decided to abort that takeoff and then we started again. Uh, so this time I decided that I would really push it here. And you can see it'll sort of shudder and complain about it. And beep, it beeps, it beeps, it doesn't shudder. But we managed to take off from Panama and we are on our way to Los Angeles. So the first flight was 1,989 nautical miles, the second flight will be 2,987. And it was a goal of mine to make sure that the flights combined to more than the circumference of the Earth, so 21,600 nautical miles, so it's a proper circumnavigation. We're technically not crossing the equator. Incidentally, the Concorde has the record for the fastest circumnavigation by a non-spacecraft. Uh, there was two versions of the flight. There's one that did cross the equator and one that didn't. That's our existing plot right now. You know, using little nav map, you can see uh, the way I went around Florida and Cuba there. But uh, the two record-setting flights were one that crossed the equator and one that didn't. And they were on the order of 30-ish hours. I think it was 33 hours for the one that crossed the equator. But they actually took off from Lisbon. Uh, we will be landing in Lisbon as the um, second to last leg and taking off from there for the last leg so here we are at LAX and except on the Panama leg I think I consistently ask for clearance for landing uh, not something I always do in flight sim sorry but uh, yeah sometimes I just like to fly in this is why we had to go over the city and come back around because they wanted us landing at this runway instead otherwise I would just flown straight in from the coastal side even though that's probably not right. And we had a little F-18 there, even though I got clearance this time. Anyway. And... Dungeoning it down there. See, again, I, I the landing gear height, especially since I raised myself up using spacebar, it was a little bit difficult to judge. But anyway, we are down here at Los Angeles, and the next flight is to Honolulu. The flight from Panama to Los Angeles was three hours and five minutes and again it'd be easier to just cut across the United States but then we'd be flying over land past the sound barrier so we avoided that by basically taking the Panama Canal so here we go parking yes we even parked and there you can see the logbook so far and the two failures at uh, Panama well the second one was an aborted one but the first one was the one that we crashed into the trees so that's the logbook so far and continuing on, this is the takeoff from Los Angeles. Now I'm not pausing to simulate refueling or anything like that, so it's not as if I'm legitimately trying to challenge the around the world record. We'll do that with the Dark Star, I mean that's easier, but anyway. Uh, but yeah, we're, we're not taking our time like that, that uh, as we're supposed to. But this is July 16th and as of this point, I was trying to do the entire flight continuously, and that was going to be taxing, but we were okay on time so far. In our words, uh, 24 hours of flight time. There is a little bit of downtime between flights when I'm replotting and taking a break, and that's actual downtime because uh, I continue listening to the Paul in real time audio, and of course, the live stream is actually still running. 
during that time. So, Pan Am there, and we have the an alternate VFR map there, and you can see our location. And here we are approaching Hawaii. Not much to see along the way, of course, it's just the Pacific Ocean. Really, the main entertainment value was provided, especially across the oceans, by Mike Collins' comments in the Apollo 11 audio. I do like Mike Collins and his comments. Uh, the weather at Honolulu was not great, as you can see, very cloudy, and I'm not as familiar with the airport uh, PHNL as I probably ought to be. And in this case, I approached too fast and a little bit askew, too. Um, also, actually the runway itself is a little bit askew. If you can take a look at the mar markings, the markings are actually closer to the right edge than the left edge anyway. I decided to abort that flawed approach and go around, and so there's the next approach. But we found a lot of uh, marking anomalies. There was one runway in particular that had some weird marking issues uh, with the runway. Uh, like, it was curved in. So, yeah, very peculiar. But you can sort of see uh, the markings are actually off, but then I'm even more off, so what can I say? Anyway, the point is I managed to not kill us. That is the important part, and we are down. So, yeah, the, the next takeoff I actually did uh, won't be included in here because there was so much lag I decided to restart the whole program. And that's for safety's sake, obviously. So, yeah, after this I restarted the game and then took off again. And it assigned us a different runway. The first runway was the one with the curvy markings that were really weird. So off we go. Maybe maybe they have curly curvy markings on that particular runway. I don't know. And so there's out from Honolulu on our way to Tokyo. Uh, the flight from LAX to Honolulu was 2,237 nautical miles and took 2 hours and 31 minutes. So, so far we've basically been flying... I think exactly for eight hours. I mean, in flight. The in flight logged time is eight hours. Well, it's, uh, it's got some clouds uh, up and down. And, and uh, there's a little nav map showing our route. Uh, and it also shows the back route. I didn't know it did that. But it sort of erases it after a little while, unfortunately. Otherwise, if I could have a way of exporting the final map after we completed the circumnavigation, that would have been great. But I didn't see a way of doing that, and it started erasing the initial legs. So here we are approaching Japan and completing our extremely tedious Pacific leg. Of course, there's not a whole lot of scenery and everything, uh, but I discovered that my engines were off. Uh, yeah, we had been losing speed, and so I decided to try and restart them, and they did restart. And so that was a little bit peculiar. I didn't know why. Uh, they decided to turn off, and but were able to restart. Ultimately, I decided that there was some fuel flow issue, and there needed to be a fuel crossfeed thing. But I, I still don't quite understand why they'd be able to restart if it really, really was the case that we don't have enough fuel. But they did quit on us again. So here they are. You can see the the RPM gauges going down, and that time I wasn't able to restart them. So it might have been a fuel issue. That's the current theory I have. Uh, but I decided to glide it in. I, re I felt that I had enough height. But I think they quit for the second time at around 30,000 feet. We were already descending into Tokyo. And I figured that we had enough energy to land at Haneda Airport where I decided that we would be landing. So, yep, here it is. A dead stick landing into Tokyo. And here my space shuttle experience probably helps quite a lot. Yep, you can see the dial is still at zero, nothing doing. The throttle is up, you can see the throttle is all the way up, so there's no reason for the RPM gauges to be at zero unless the engines are not working. And here I'm making the turn towards Haneda International. You can see our speed there. And I am more or less approached it as if we were doing a shuttle landing. It seemed fair. And there's my co-pilot, who I wish could have done something, but no. And 
it's the cloud shrouded runway too and it was a little bit cloudy here as you can tell but not horribly so oh and just while i'm in this tense moment uh, the audio decided to have all sorts of funny sounds a little blooping and uh phone ringing that that was a hoot so with all these interesting sound effects from the apollo audio we are doing our dead stick approach to Haneda Airport and I present it uncut because it was a glorious moment. Really I'm always secretly hoping that the engines will just give out so that I have a chance to do a glorious dead stick landing. I should mention I don't have rudder pedals, it's a twist uh, joystick rudder, so that's why I often just use roll instead of trying to use the twist joystick to control the rudder. We'll see, uh, I think on the Honolulu one you saw me uh, messing with the rudder a bit and it wiggling badly, it's just not very natural really. Anyway, we managed to survive our landing at Tokyo and we will be moving on next to a flight to Kuala Lumpur. And of course we don't have any engine power so taxiing to the gates wasn't going to happen. Uh, we basically lost speed right here and we had to wait for Tokyo. So that was a flight 3348 nautical miles and took 3 hours and 25 minutes. And I do think that it's the longer flights, it is because of the length of the flight that we lost the engine and that's why I think it was a fuel transfer issue. So anyway, there is the logbook as is right now. And here we are taking off from Tokyo. And we had another Concorde behind us for some reason. I don't know how that works. And there's somebody trying to land in the other direction. But anyway, off we go. And there's our departure from Tokyo Bay as we heard astronaut descriptions of the Earth. They were doing a TV transmission at that point. And so more of the Pacific Ocean, even though we've crossed it, we still have this part to deal with. And so we were alongside Taiwan, but didn't really get a good look at it. We kept a uh, fair distance there, but ultimately we rounded Vietnam and we got closer look, but I still kept uh, a good distance. So I, we didn't disturb anybody, you know, and in fact, as we approached Malaysia, I was approaching too fast past Mach 1. And you can see I've diverted to the south to avoid crossing land past Mach 1. Just to keep as much as possible with that rule. Even though I'm probably skirting it quite a lot. I don't actually know how wide the Mach cone is and how far to the side we would be disturbing people. Uh, so, anyway. I was trying my best, darn it. And here we are landing at Kuala Lumpur. Initially I was planning to land at Singapore, but we had enough flight distance. Actually the total flight distance at the end of this is going to be 23,142, whereas all we needed for a certain navigation is 21,600 nautical miles. So I decided to cut a little bit shorter by going to Kuala Lumpur instead of Singapore. And so here we go. And again with the rudder, I really shouldn't. Yeah, okay. Alright, so we are down. And again, I used the elevated position with the space bar in order to get a good view out of the window. And uh, I tried to get air traffic control or ground services ground control to tell me where to go but that didn't work out this time. I did however decide to extend the jetway so we got that. There we go there's jetway coming towards us. Sort of weirdly clipped into the building there though. It's very haphazard and everything. But you know okay. 
So as I'm taking off here at Kuala Lumpur, uh, we have done 14 hours and 20-ish minutes of flight. And the overall time has been longer than that. And I was expecting to arrive at Dubai, our destination for this leg, the sixth leg, uh, about 19 hours in. So we're mostly on track for getting around the world in 24 hours-ish. Uh, the problem is the sim or my computer was not liking life anymore, even though I did restart at uh, Honolulu. Uh, not restart the computer, but restart the game. And ultimately, and here you can see us plotting our way around the land masses still, uh, down south of Sri Lanka, but as we approached Dubai, it decided to crash on me. So we completed the flight basically, and I got my clearance to land and everything, we lined up, and so basically after 19 hours of live streaming, it decided to crash. The game decided to crash. I didn't crash, darn it. Uh, but the game decided to crash on me, and you'll see that in a moment. So this leaves me with sort of a conundrum as we see the freeze and then the background screen indicating that the game is no longer there. I didn't really feel right about picking up just with the landing. We have to basically restart the flight from Kuala Lumpur, even though I had done that three hour flight. It was a three hour flight. Uh, I didn't have it in me to continue immediately. After 19 hours of streaming, I decided that I would have to just sleep and we would pick it up the next morning. So I did sleep and we started, so we're no longer in real time. And I decided not to start the Apollo 11 audio in real time. Instead, we picked it up from July, so I'm flying on July 17th here, and we're listening to the audio from July 20th when they actually land on the moon. So we fast forwarded there. The time of the flight is not real time anymore. It was real time for the part, parts before this, the first five flights. Now it's uh, adjusted so that we're picking up where we left off, despite the fact that I had uh, the lost three hours via the failed flight and also slept. So yeah, all of that business as we are flying besides Malaysia and up around Sumatra and then south of Sri Lanka and then head back. This time I decided not to land at Dubai. I decided Dubai might be dangerous. Dubai is very busy, there's lots of other traffic there, other players, and it's a scenery complicated area, the airport is high scenery. I decided to land at Abu Dhabi instead, uh, because I decided that it might be safer, so OMAA. For those that just want the codes, it's JFK, uh, KJFK to MPSM, MPSM to KLAX, KLAX to uh, PHNL, PHNL to RJTT, RJTT to WMKK, WMKK to OMAA, which is here, OMAA to LPPT, and then LPPT to KJFK again, those eight flights. So here, here we are landing at Abu Dhabi. A great disappointment, but, you know, we continue despite the fact that my intended plans are out the window at this point. And so there we go, touchdown. And then the serious nose down that it does. And there isn't much scenery at Abu Dhabi, that's part of the reason I decided to just land here. But I swear, Asoba must really hate Abu Dhabi for some reason to, uh, to have structures like this, not even a tarmac or anything. The apron is just desert. Uh, really? I mean, there must be something better. But anyway, I actually forgot to hit record initially on the takeoff from Abu Dhabi. Uh, because, of course, between each flight I go back to the menu and replot the flight and everything. I don't record that part generally. And so, yeah, sorry about that. I didn't record the takeoff, but it was an uneventful takeoff. And here we get the scenes of the palm tree islands and such at the United Arab Emirates. We go up the Persian Gulf and we do go past the sound barrier over Iraq and Syria, sorry. Um, yeah, that's just how it is. And uh, we could have gone subsonic across the Arabian Peninsula and to the Mediterranean. That would take longer, of course, but uh, that was an option. Or we could have gone around the Arabian Peninsula to the south and gone up the Red Sea and then just gone supersonic over the Sinai. But yeah, this is the way I decided to go. This is the easiest way to manage this. 
And obviously after our troubles so far, I decided that we weren't going to be taking the long way around anywhere. So we are trying to expedite here. This is actually the longest leg, uh, 3,555 nautical miles. Uh, the flight took uh, 3 hours and 32 minutes. The bright side is we have a lot of scenery around here. We've got Turkey to our right, Cyprus to our left, and then we continually see land along the way. Here's Crete, of course, and you can see the plot that uh, keeps us more or less in the sight of land through the Mediterranean. A uh, little nav map had erased the earlier legs there, but had it from Tokyo onward. And so here is Sicily with Mount Etna. We are staying above the water even though it looks like right now we're almost going on land. But again, I don't know how broad the disturbance caused by our Mach 2 existence might be. And here finally the Strait of Gibraltar. Nice to see it. And we'll get a close-up of the Rock of Gibraltar. Well, not a close close-up, but you know, we get a better look. Uh, approaching from the east side it isn't very distinct. It's better to see it from up top or something. And here is the landing at Lisbon. A little bit of a scenery-heavy area. I think it's a photogrammetry area. And so a little bit more lag. And the approach to the runway. So after this, we just have the last leg across the Atlantic to JFK International. And I'm having trouble getting it to sit down. There we go. Okay, all right, all right there. We're generally landing a bit heavy too. I left a lot of reserve fuel for us. And the parking. This airport certainly looks better than the previous. But not great. I mean, it's still sort of a generic airport. It's just that the Abu Dhabi airport is especially bad. Okay, here we are taking off from Lisbon on the final leg. And obviously I am extraordinarily tired at this point. There was a 19 hour stream the previous day and the stream on July 17th was ultimately I think 11 hours altogether. So that's 30 hours in two days. Of course I took breaks. I did take breaks while I was on autopilot. So here it is up from Lisbon. Also I didn't talk very much. I'm a very boring streamer. Nice view though. And so this flight is 2,937 nautical miles and it took 3 hours and 5 minutes. The total flight time overall, just the flight time, not the downtime or anything like that, uh, was 24 hours 5 minutes. So actually in flight we managed to do it basically in 24 hours, just 5 minutes extra. But including the in-game downtime that I had, even, of course I'm not refueling or taking any of that time, Including the in-game downtime, it took 26 hours, 20 minutes. And then if we take the entire stream time, that was 30 hours and 54 minutes. But then also I had the sleep time in there. So throw in sleep and I think the whole thing was something like a 39 hour ordeal. So there you have it. And here we are coming into JFK International. 23,142 nautical miles and actually the engines had quit on final and I had to quickly restart them and they did restart thankfully and so you can see that the RPM needles are in different positions because of the order in which I restarted the engines but they did restart so I did have engine power landing this time but it the game decided to try and pay, play a last trick on me on the final leg here by having the engines quit just as I was approaching JFK International and I was really pushing the plane there so yeah but I do think that it's just uh, some of the tanks aren't set to cross feed initially and you have to flick something in the back to get them to do that and unlike the Kolimata Concorde and X-Plane 11 there isn't an automatic engineer that does that I suppose okay so here we are at JFK after the completion of the flight JFK is a handcrafted airport but that roadway still sort of runs right into the taxiway for some reason. I suppose it's supposed to go underneath. 
but here we are. And for entertainment purposes, I skipped around in the Apollo audio, so we got the bit with them landing on the moon, and then we also got some of the EVA while going across the Atlantic Ocean. So during the last leg, we listened to their walking on the moon. After parking, I bring the jetway over, but that isn't connected to anything, so it's sort of a jetway to nowhere. That's interesting. There's another one sitting to our right there that was the same way. And here, the logbook, I bring it up by turning off the battery. And we can take a look at the logbook and we can see the times there. I've already told you how it all shaped up. But with that, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.